So it's my honor to introduce uh, today's speaker. We're uh, blessed to have Captain Rick Bronbeck. He assumed the command of the Naval Surface Warfare Center, the Corona Division, in October of last year. As a commanding officer, he leads more than 3,200 sailors, naval civilians, and support contractors in Corona's critical mission as the Navy's primary independent assessment and analyze agent. There's 3,200 people that work in that center over there, wow. Responsible for gauging war, war fighting capability in the U.S. Navy ships and aircraft, Corona also leads the Navy and Marine Corps in measurement science and in range systems engineering for tactical training ranges like Top Gun. Hey, there's a word I recognize, Top Gun, so. Corona has been uh, recently designated as the Navy's program manager for the live virtual constructive training environment, which is the next generation of training for the Defense Department. Captain Brombeck has a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering with a minor in physical oceanography and an MBA from the Navy Postgraduate School. And more importantly, he's married with two children. So let's hear it for Captain Rick Bronbeck. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right, good morning, Corona. Um, we'd like to start out, Bobby Spiegel, for inviting me here and all of you. Great support, and can't say it enough. Um, the support we get from the community is not felt this way throughout the country, um, at least to the level you give, so I appreciate that. Ms. Yolanda Carrillo, our honorary CEO is here, so thank you, awesome, and thank you for all you've done. Um, we have Jeremy Vaughn and Michael Tao, um, some of the young people from, from the command um, back there doing great stuff. Hopefully you get a chance to, to see some of the, the neat displays they have in just a small group of the many young people and some older that do great things out there. So with that, I'll start with a brief. My name's Captain Rick Braunbeck. Uh, Miss Diane Coslow, who probably most of you know, um, has been out at the base for over 30 years doing a great job as our technical director. Okay, we, um, we enable the warfighter to fight, train, and win um, using independent assessment, measurement science, and um, independent, again, independent assessment. Um, science and engineering is our mainstay, about 66% of our of our employees are scientists and engineers so very highly as you can see down below educated um, workforce um, good jobs um, great jobs that I would have loved to have you know 30 years ago when I started out we have um, part of a team of 10 warfare centers undersea and surface warfare centers aligned under NAVC um, headquartered back at the Navy Yard in in Washington with that, we have four main technical areas, um, technical departments, independent assessment with um, performance assessment, our acquisition research, and uh, measurement science, as well as our range systems um, business, which is also growing. Okay, history. So history goes back to World War II, or actually before that, um, during the Great Depression, um, there was a, a grand hotel there. It was doing good, hit the Great Depression, rolling into World War II. Um, within days of Pearl Harbor, um, the Navy needed a place to have a hospital, and they purchased, purchased the, um, the hotel. With that, throughout um, both the World War II and into the Korean War, it served as a Navy hospital. Um, and did very well during that time. As we moved into um, the Korean War, 1950s, we started our business in independent assessment, in, um, in metrology, and that business has continued to grow um, throughout our history. Alt Report came out, um, that was during Vietnam, and um, really looking at why our um, our air-to-air -air combat and our missile systems um, weren't working quite as well as we wanted to. And that, as was mentioned already, we talked about, um, about Top Gun, and so that was the genesis of that and um, the genesis of our business out there working in, um, in range support. 
as we move on through our, through our history. 2001, we became a um, surface warfare center um, under NAVC, so really kicking off there and um, just great growth, which I'll, which I'll be able to, to talk to you about in the, um, in the next slides. Four of our prime um, buildings down below, the J Wall, the um, Doherty Memorial, the Mistel, which is our measurement science building, and then down in Seal Beach, we have another um, measurement science building. Next slide. Okay, Norco. So we've been in Norco uh, and um, about 1,200 DOD civilians. So not all of the 3,000 people live here, but, but a majority of them do. Um, contractor civilians, so we have a very close relationship with contractors. I believe on the 19th, we're going to have a, um, a um, open house type um, thing, small business down in the um, um, Corona um, City Hall. So looking, looking forward to that. And um, some of you may be out there. I think, I think we are sold out now, but we will continue that, that engagement and um, looking for those small businesses to partner with us in, in what we do. Okay, Fallbrook and Seal Beach, as you can see up there, is our other two primary debts and other sites around the country, um, mostly in the range facilities area. As, as I'll get into, we are tying in all of the ranges together and back into that live virtual constructive piece. Okay, and um, as you can see, I won't go into each one. We do have footprint around the country and growing around the world. Next slide. Okay, here's a quick, um, quick video in our measurement science, one of the neat things we're doing. Um, I know um, Norco College is um, working on the um, photonic center, so that's very exciting. It, it is a business growing, and we're doing related stuff um, here on base. This here is a, a pressure sensor that actually measures the power from um, directed energy lasers. So in the past, the laser was sh shined into a um, calorimeter, measured the heat, um, very inefficient um, and, and not that accurate. What we're able to do is when the laser impinges on that mirror, it actually deflects it, feels the force, the force is equal on 50 kilowatts, enough to vaporize a lot of stuff, weighs about the, the same as two staples in your hand. So that, that's kind of the force that, that's felt there. But we have very precision um, measurement instruments, and um, we help design that with NIST. So um, I'm very proud of this. And we're, we're also building a, um, a facility to work further on this and um, and some other associated um, projects um, there on base. Okay. A U.S. Navy Aegis cruiser is positioned more than 250 nautical miles off the coast of Kauai, conducting a simulated BMD station patrol. The ship uses simulated operational intelligence to configure the Aegis weapon system to protect the assigned defended area. Based on mission planner outputs, the ship's crew programs the SPY-1 radar to perform a search, optimized for the assigned ballistic missile defense mission. The ship is not informed of the launch time. The ARAV extended range target is launched from the Pacific Missile Range Facility on the island of Kauai. The target flies a nominal trajectory, and the mock warhead separates from the booster. As the target rises above the horizon, the SPY-1 radar acquires and tracks the target. The Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense Weapon System develops a fire control solution, and the ship's crew monitors preparations for the SM-3 launch. Several minutes after target launch, the weapon system fires the standard Missile 3 Block 1B. The missile completes booster burn and separation, followed by second stage rocket motor burn and separation. Airborne cameras track the missile throughout most of its flight. During flight, the weapon system provides guidance commands to the missile. After second stage separation, the third stage rocket motor ignites, propelling the missile out of the atmosphere and into space. After third stage Pulse-1 burns out, the missile ejects its nose cone, 
then ignites third stage Pulse 2. The Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense Weapon System provides a final update to the missile. Based upon the most precise information from the SPY-1 radar and BMD signal processor, the kinetic warhead is ejected from the third stage. After separation, the throttleable divert and attitude control system ignites and stabilizes the kinetic warhead. The infrared seeker, informed by information previously received from the ship, selects the target and calculates final divert and attitude control system commands to close the target. As range decreases, the target image grows in the seeker field of view. The two-color seeker, advanced signal processor, and improved divert and attitude control system guide the kinetic warhead to intercept. Mark India, a direct hit. Okay, a um, very short period of time depicted there. Huge amount of time, engineering, and um, assessment, measurement, all, all things we do in Corona go in in the background to make, make things like that happen. Um, it makes me think back, Monday morning group, I, I spoke to them a while ago, and it was the morning before the announcement of, um, of the uh, agreement to meet with North Korea. And I said and had no idea that that was gonna happen the next day, that the best thing about what we do is we build that credible threat and that, that confidence that we can go up against our adversaries and hopefully that causes none of them to, to ever pull the trigger or, um, or cause us to be in that situation. Okay. Another, another quick video here. The next big innovation that we're gonna see with combat training systems is incorporating what we call LVC, or Live Virtual Constructive Technology. So what you'll have is a live player in a live environment with all their equipment, a live player with simulated equipment interacting in between, and then a computer generating other capabilities rounding out, but no live players, but simply blended to give a more complete experience. You can't get all the live capabilities to the environment. Simply, they're not available for all kinds of operating reasons and availability reasons. So the ability to provide them synthetically through virtual and constructive augmentation enables for that more complete training experience, but without having to have all the capabilities available. You can test out tactics, equipment, procedures in a virtual environment before you take it to the field and actually use it with real troops in a real environment. One of the limitations right now that we have with live training is presenting enough threats to a modern aviator that has incredible capability and weapon systems and sensors at his disposal. So in order to really challenge that pilot, we need to be able to inject more threats into the training scenario. And LVC promises to do that. Cubic's goal is to ensure the experience of a training audience is exactly reflective of the operating environment they will find themselves in. And we are talking about the terrain, interacting with the people, facilities, the conditions, and the enemy that they would find themselves in. It has the potential to save a lot of money and give very realistic training. And now that we've got next generation platforms that have to play in the battle space with older generation legacy type things, the idea is that LVC allows us to make a level playing field and be able to take advantage of all the different capabilities of this new technology. Okay. Oh, thanks. So definitely with our displays kind of ties into the, um, the virtual constructive side of that. With all the ranges listed here, um, up and down the east and west coast, we are tying those together in a network of live ranges, and that will allow us to um, both bring back data from those ranges, as well as allow the live virtual constructive, and we've just overlaid the, um, the NCTE, the Navy Continuous Training Environment Network, and as it's connected, not only to the, um, the U.S. forces, 
but our allies in um, Australia, um, Britain, Germany, France, Italy, and Canada, as we can network them together, we can basically have people in simulators in the U.S. Um, training with forces in Europe, in Australia, as well as fighting against generated opponents um, that are just um, computerized. We can push that into those systems and they can train um, to the high-end threat that, that is developing. And, and we just can't, can't afford to build a whole nother fleet of um, aircraft or ships to go against us. This way we can, we can go out there and train to, to what is the potential. Um, also, as you see up top, we're connecting in with the Air Force, so um, great, great opportunities there because not only will we go to war with, um, supported by our allies, Navy allies, but also side by side um, going into those battles with the Air Force. So it's very important that we tie things together. And we are um, definitely on the, the leading edge of, of trying to make that all work. A lot of very hard problems, um, timing problems of people doing things live, virtual through a computer, and um, constructive pushing things and information to a cockpit. Timing issues are very important there. Okay, data analytics. We have been doing data analytics for a long time. It's very big. It's growing. Um, we are one of the very few places that have been doing it for decades. And I'll let you see a little bit on that. We have Cycloptic that's over here in a corner. This has been a three-year NICE project. What's the so what of something that is basically quadcopter-based platform that could fly off of a ship, hover over an area, and let you know within centimeter accuracy where your gunfire is landing? Let's think big on this for a second. If you're, if you're playing in a live, virtual, constructive environment, and the ship is the only real thing, and everything else is in a virtual or constructive environment, this quadcopter can fly out in the real space to the places where the virtual and constructive ships exist in fake world. And then as that real ship fires against a virtual ship, it can tell you within a centimeter accuracy how accurate you are in seeing that. Why is a 50 cal machine gun with augmented reality important? If you're also in a live virtual constructive environment, most people don't realize the time differences of delay of data from those three different environments are completely different. When you've got a augmented reality headset on firing a real gun towards a target that's in another hallway that's wearing a tracking system, you have all three of those systems existing. We're using this 50 cal machine gun while partnering with UCLA and UCR to try to figure out how to do the prediction that's required in order to make the real live data that's coming in at the rate of the virtual and constructive data. It's a really, really hard problem. And if you get some of your best mathematicians on this, you'll realize really fast it's a really hard problem. So as much as we talk about LVC being the answer for the Navy, we have to solve some of these littler problems in our R&D pieces to be able to solve the much bigger problems for the Navy. Um, with that all being said, our overall strategic goal of our base is to, is to really become the, the, the holder of big data. And when we say that, what does big data mean? Big data is less about us storing all the data and controlling it, and it's more about us going into the cloud and figuring out how we can manipulate the data in ways that other people can use it. That's what we're trying to do. That's what the future of our base looks like. Across the CTOs, we have these R&D projects everywhere. And I really do believe we are on the cutting edge of what the Navy can be doing and making not only our warfighters safer, but making our Navy more incredibly awesome when they're out there fighting what they do day in and day out. Okay. Real quick, tremendous outreach. Um, undergraduate and graduate um, students. Next 65 summer interns out there, from many from the local area here. So great partnership as well as our local universities. Um, huge growth, 71% in business and 54% in, in our workforce. That's only in five years, so, and we, we see that continuing on, the demand. We have some constraints that we're working on so that we can fit those people in. Next slide, as you can see, um, you know, our total civilian population has gone up 
because of our constraints and facilities is one of the areas um, here at the Norco site. As you can see, our population at the base has um, diminished. We're at over 90% occupancy. We're doing work trying to refit some of the um, historical buildings, but um, we have need for additional, additional facilities. Down below, you can see our square footage for our workforce has pretty much stayed constant. Okay, summary, unique mission, um, annual state of the command coming up this fall, Inland Empire Navy birthday ball, and our open house um, science experience. Nope. October 13th for the Navy ball, so come out, great event, and definitely November 3rd, um, our open house. Come join us, be there, bring some students that are interested in um, science and engineering. So thank you. All right, so we're going to get, we'll put on the website when the next uh, program will be to learn about how to do business with the, with the Navy, because the, I guess the one coming up is sold out, so, but I did want to present you with one of our, our coins that Bob was talking about, so uh, our logo in our theme, our logo is on this site, our theme this year is at your service, and so that's for you, because that's what you do your whole life, has been at service to the, to the country and to your guys, so I appreciate everything you do, so when you see that, you'll know what's really important in life, and you've been doing it. So thank you very much for your service. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Corona.